There are new medications available to cure Hep C that see 95% of people who take them cured typically within 12 weeks. It is incredible. When I read the stuff that they were talking about, I went, oh, it's too good to be true, can't possibly be right. But with hundreds of patients having gone through treatment, I've been converted about these medications. Every GP in Australia is able to prescribe Hep C medication. However, there is a caveat, and that is that before they're allowed to prescribe, they have to have an email, telephone, video conference consultation with a specialist to get the tick. The first thing your GP is going to ask you to do when you present uh, for Hep C medication is probably do a blood test because 25% of people who've got hep C antibodies don't actually end up with chronic hep C. So we want to do a viral load. If you haven't had a genotype, we need to know that because there are different medication combinations that get used for different genotypes. If we give you the wrong one, you won't get cured. So we want to give you the right one, so we need to know that. We also need to know your level of fibrosis. That can be established by a fibro scan, can be established by blood test, used to be established by liver biopsy. So we want to know three things. We want to know viral load, we want to know genotype, and we want to know level of fibrosis. Because those three bits go into the decision about which medications you need and how long you need them for. The side effects of these medications are really rather mild. Like any medication, tummy upset and rash happen. They're not very common with these medications. The two ones that happen at about 20% of the time, headache and insomnia. For most patients, if they get uh, headaches, it's a few headaches around the start of treatment. Insomnia is an interesting one in that it's not so much a problem getting to sleep, um, it's when you wake up, people wake up really awake. It's probably to do with the clearing of the fatigue that's plagued people for all these years. The treatment experience with these medications is really kind of remarkable in that unlike interferon ribavirin which made you feel like death for the best part of a year, with these medications you've got three days a week feeling a little bit under the weather, a bit like you've got a hangover, a bit like you've got flu. And then within a week a lot of my patients tell me they have not felt this good for 20 years. So the typical patient treatment lasts 12 weeks. One tablet a day, that's it. After you've had your first blood test, it will take about a week to 10 days for the viral load result to come back. Your liver function result will be back the next day and that will be better than it was. The viral load takes a while. So when that comes back, for most people it is undetected and that's kind of a nice phone call for a GP to make. After you've been undetected, we know that people stay undetected while they're on treatment. So there's really not a lot of reason to go and have more blood tests, unless of course you're unwell. At the completion of the course, it is hurry up and wait. We've stopped giving you medications that are killing off the virus. So the question is, is there any virus left and is it going to grow back? If there is virus left, it's going to grow back. At four weeks out from treatment, if we can't see any virus, that is you're undetected four weeks out, it's called SVR4. If that's the case, you have a 96% chance of being cured. 12 weeks out, it's a 99% chance. 24 weeks out, 99.9. .9. It depends on how interested you are to know. If people get a recurrence, they basically just go back to feeling as ordinary as they were before they started treatment. So they know that it's happened. So four week one is interesting and some people just cannot wait. The 12 week one is one that we would commonly do because it's a 99% chance. So if you come back negative at 12 weeks, it's 100 to one odds in your favor that you cured. 24 week one was one they used to do in the days of interferon ribavirin, but it's been shown that the, the 12 week ones are pretty good. Once the medication's complete, what you do next is interesting. You're cured. Here's a disease you've had for 20 years. 
you do actually have to think, who am I now and, and what do I do? You're no longer hepatitis C sufferer, you're no longer going to have chronic fatigue, you're going to be able to get on with the things that you were doing probably 20 or 30 years ago. It's a new lease on life. Look, GPDU and our doctors have been prescribing the Hep C medications for the last six months. We're pretty familiar with them, we're quite happy dealing with them, we've seen good results. We understand you know, what's required around prescribing. So for a patient who's unable to get a script from their local GP, they can certainly see one of our doctors online and we'll almost certainly be able to help. GPDU won't be charging an additional fee for the specialist approval. You will be able to come along, see a GP, have the chat. We in the background will quietly go and check that off with the specialist for you so that essentially you can come along, see a GP, have the conversation, get your approval, get your script, get your medications, get cured. The Hep C medication is not going to cost you a lot. If you're on a healthcare card, it's going to cost you $20 for three scripts over a 12-week treatment course. If you're not on a healthcare card, it's going to cost you $37.30 for each script, so it's about $100 for your 12-week treatment. Yeah, look, there is a, a drug called Harvoni, which comes in a single pill, so that'll be one script. So you need three of those to do a 12-week course, and 12 weeks is the common treatment. So that'd be $100 as your sort of top price. Solvati and Declinza, two different drugs, two different scripts. If you're not on a concession card, it's two separate lots of $37. So that would cost you a couple of hundred dollars for your 12-week treatment. Look, if you take the treatment and you're not cured, and that's not all that likely, if you think about what 95% means, it means there's a pack of 20 straws. In that pack, there is one short straw, so only one out of 20 people is likely to have to actually deal with this question. But if you're unlucky enough to not be cured, say you've taken a 12-week course, we do know that if we put people on a 24-week course of the same medication, we see about a 90% cure rate. So it is entirely possible to retreat people. It's possible to treat people with the same drugs for longer. It's possible to treat people with slightly different drugs for longer. Both of those strategies have been shown to work. If you're not getting any symptoms with your Hep C, I would still advise you to take treatment. Now the reason is quite straightforward. We know that Hep C is progressive. We know that it is much easier to cure people with shorter courses of treatment if we treat them early. So you've got this disease, it's not going to go away by itself. The government is giving you $100,000 worth of free money to get treated. That might not go on forever. I would take the opportunity while it's there. If you've got cirrhosis of the liver and you take treatment, and you reach SVR, we know from the days of interferon ribavirin, your cirrhosis tends to get better. If you don't take treatment, it tends to get worse. So it's really a very good idea to, to take the treatment. If you don't have cirrhosis, we know that over a period of 20 years, it's about a 20% rate of cirrhosis. Over a period of 30 years, it's 30%. One of the big issues with cirrhosis is not just liver failure, it's the fact that liver cancer occurs much more commonly when you've got cirrhosis. And liver cancer is one of the ways that people die from hepatitis C. So by treating the disease, stopping the fibrosis and cirrhosis, your risk of the liver cancer goes down. Interestingly, your risk of a whole lot of other things go down. Risk of lymphoma goes down. Risk of renal cell carcinoma goes down. So there are a lot of benefits to actually getting treatment. My advice to patients with Hep C is this. You've got nothing to lose by going and talk to your doctor. You've got everything to gain, so do yourself a favour. Go to your GP, have the conversation, get yourself treated. Welcome to a new life.